This is Optimal Living Daily, episode 725, Gratitude to Overcome Boredom, Difficulties, Complaining, and Feeling Overwhelmed, by Leo Babauta of zenhabits.net, and I'm Justin Mollick, your personal narrator, reading to you every day, just like an audiobook, but free of charge, mostly from blogs, but sometimes from books, and with permission from the authors. Today's post from Leo Babauta was meant for Thanksgiving, really, but it still applies. Before we get to the post, thank you to Talkspace for sponsoring this episode. Talkspace is an online therapy company that makes therapy affordable, confidential, and convenient. They let you choose from over 1,500 licensed therapists. For a special offer just for you, come by Talkspace.com old. That's Talkspace.com old. So let's get right to it as we optimize your life. Gratitude to Overcome Boredom, Difficulties, Complaining, and Feeling Overwhelmed by Leo Babauta of zenhabits.net. As many give thanks for what's in their lives this week, we might look at how to go deeper with gratitude. Gratitude seems like a trite and even perhaps boring topic to many. We all know we should be grateful. And yet, there are ways that we aren't cultivating gratitude, and our lives could be much easier, even richer, if we did use gratitude in these deeper ways. Let's take a few examples. Boredom. I was talking to a friend recently about how she doesn't like to stay in stillness and quiet because it feels boring. She realizes this probably isn't good for her as she often feels the need to move, to keep busy, and she'd like to learn to be more present, slow down at times. The answer to boredom is gratitude. Let's think about a situation. You turn off your phone, get away from the computer, and go sit outside with no book, no device, no one to talk to, nothing to do. You just sit there. How useful is that? How interesting? How productive? You might answer not at all to these questions and it might seem boring, but I believe that's because we're not, number one, paying close enough attention, and number two, appreciating the gift of that moment. If I'm sitting alone with nothing to do, I might have the urge to get up and go do something or reach for my phone. But what if instead, I could pay attention to how my body feels, the texture of my breath, the light all around me, the nature sitting right in front of my face, the sounds of the world busy in activity, the vibrant colors, the life that's struggling to survive and thrive, the feeling of just being alive. The closer I pay attention, the more I might realize what a gift this is, the more I might appreciate the preciousness of it all. Gratitude trumps boredom if we let it. Difficulties. We usually think of difficulties as something we don't like and they cause us unhappiness. A difficult person we're dealing with, the loss of a job, struggling with a health issue, losing a loved one. And it's true, these are not things we normally think of as good. I'm not claiming we should rejoice at having these problems. But is there a way we can find gratitude for them nonetheless? Is there a way to see them as a gift? Gratitude can be found even in our struggles. Number one, When we're dealing with a difficult person, we can be grateful for having other people in our lives, for being alive in the first place, for having someone to practice being in a relationship with, including coworker and family relationships, for having a way to practice being better at patience and communication. We can think of this person as our teacher who is unwittingly helping us to get stronger and to grow as a person. Number two, if we lose our job, this can be very difficult but we can also find gratitude that we had a job in the first place, even if only for a while. We can be grateful that we have some savings and or a network of family to help us, or perhaps we can lean on strangers to help. We can find gratitude for the opportunity to start afresh, to reinvent ourselves, to push into the discomfort of getting good at interviewing and learning new skills and starting a new career. We can find gratitude for the opportunity to grow even in the midst of pain. Number three, Struggles with health are never fun and can often be very painful and debilitating. I'm not claiming this is good, but perhaps the pain can be mediated by a sense of gratitude of being alive, of having loved ones who might help us, of being able to feel pain, perhaps of having hearing and sight and the ability to taste. We take these other things for granted because we're focusing on the part we don't like. We might even find gratitude for the chance to get good at meditating on pain, which is a powerful way to grow. Number four, losing a loved one is painful, of course, but can we be grateful we had the gift of this person in our lives at all? My father, for example, was a real pain in the ass sometimes, but I'm so grateful to have had his inappropriate jokes, 
his passion for life, his art, his loving heart, his music, his smiling face in my life. I got 40 plus years of him and that was an absolute gift. His death also reminds me not to take my other loved ones for granted and each time I find gratitude for my other family members and my good friends and all of you, I have his death to thank for that. Difficulties are not easy to find gratitude for, but they can become incredible paths of growth and learning if we see the lesson in them, if we start to see everything as our teacher, especially the pain and struggle. Complaining. Many of us have the mental habit of complaining about a situation, about another person. We might not even realize we're doing it, but every time we feel a bit of resentment, this is a form of complaining, and it's a good way to waste our lives. Gratitude is the antidote for resentment, irritation, frustration, and complaining. Each time you notice yourself feeling resentment or complaining, notice that you have a story in your head that's causing the feeling of resentment. Notice that you're letting the storyline fill your head, and then find a way to be grateful. Drop the habit of resentment and complaining each time you notice it. Choose the gratitude habit instead. See what a difference it can make. Feeling overwhelmed. Many days we can feel stressed and overwhelmed, especially in the holiday season when we add social events, shopping, family gatherings, cooking, and decorating to our already busy lives. How can we deal with this feeling of overwhelm? By being grateful for everything in our lives that's overwhelming us, by cherishing each thing in our to-do list, each person making a request by text or email, each event that's stressing us out. Each of these is an absolute gift, and to be overwhelmed is to complain about these gifts. To find appreciation for each one of the gifts is to let go of the stress and to find the love in the chaos instead. You just listened to the post titled Gratitude to Overcome Boredom, Difficulties, Complaining, and Feeling Overwhelmed by Leo Babauta of zenhabits.net. And big thanks again to my sponsor for today's episode, Talkspace. Gratitude and thankfulness is definitely something a mental health professional can work with you on. And Talkspace, the online therapy company, makes it easy to connect with an experienced, licensed therapist. They have over 1,500 of them who you can pick based on your preferences and for a fraction of the price of traditional therapy. You can send your therapist text, audio, or video messages, or do a live video chat. It's up to you, which I love. Talkspace therapists are fully licensed and go through a rigorous screening process in addition to thousands of hours of supervised professional training. So to match with your perfect therapist, come on over to Talkspace.com slash old. As a special offer just for you, you can use the code old to get $30 off your first month, all while showing your support for this podcast. That's the code OLD and Talkspace.com slash OLD. Talkspace, therapy for how we live today. And I'll leave it there for today, but I do wanna say how thankful I am for you listening, even if you've never reached out to me before, which is the majority of you. I get a general idea from my podcast host how many people are listening and it's nowhere near how many people email, which is totally fine. I wouldn't be able to answer everyone anyway. But my point is just listening every day means a lot to me. So thank you so much for that. Have a great rest of your day. I'll see you tomorrow where your optimal life awaits. Hey, this is Dan from the Optimal Finance Daily Podcast, which is a lot like this show, except more focused on personal finance. Justin handpicks the best posts he can find from blogs and authors like Ramit Sethi, Mr. Money Mustache, and more, and I read them to you five days a week. So if you enjoy this podcast, come on over and subscribe to Optimal Finance Daily too. And together, we'll optimize your financial life. You've been listening to Optimal Living Daily. Be sure to hit the subscribe button to stay up to date on each new episode and head to oldpodcast.com. That's oldpodcast.com for a free gift as well as more actionable tips and resources to help you maximize your potential. Thanks for joining us. And remember, your optimal life awaits.